everyone, welcome to another Wizards Unite video, and today I actually have some recordings of a, a tower that we just did, actually, well, forest more, uh, to be more precise. Uh, we did a forest with uh, our usual group, if you guys don't know already, I usually play the for uh, our two fortresses in a group of three, which is a magologist, aura, and a professor, all decently at, at, at similar levels, and uh, I actually do think uh, for a three-person group, Magiologist, Professor, and Aura is probably the best combo. <laughs> Anyways, we tried Fortress, um, the Forest Chamber 5 on those one. This is the highest we could do without using potions, so let's, let's uh, have a look at the recording. I have the Aura and myself, Magiologist, screens here, and just, I'm just, I guess, uh, it's, since it was too late when we went out, I couldn't really record in real time. So I'm just gonna bring the footage back and I guess kind of commentate on what's going on, why we did certain things and stuff. So uh, let's let's get into this. Five, four, three, two, one, and there we go. All right. So in this chamber, for some reason, I don't know what's going on with this bug, but like sometimes one person would have more enemies than the other folks, but like you can't actually fight those enemies. So anyways, um, our plan here is to start off by giving the uh, professor actually one focus from uh, from the aura so the professor could give a protection uh, protection charm to our magizoologist. So there's a few ways to approach this, I guess, and then obviously aura just puts their debuffs on the, uh, you know, the rightful enemies and we thought it was a better idea to give magiologist the protection charm instead of going for the proficiency charm which is a uh, seven focus points since we are trying to do this without potions like if, if we're doing this with potions then easy peasy a few strong invigoration uh potions and then you know we'll get um uh, we'll get protection charm, we'll get deterioration hex, uh, we'll get proficiency charm all running, but since we're trying to do that without potions, we're trying to uh, conserve or use our uh, focus in the most efficiency, efficient way possible, and the reason why we are giving it to Magizoologist, because we don't want Magizoologist to die, if Magizoologist, die, if Magizoologist dies, uh, can't revive anyone, right? Obviously. And the other reason why we didn't pull all our spell energy so that we could have a proficiency charm at the start of the battle even though our professor actually uh max i don't think max out but like is one away from maxing out proficiency charm really really powerful <laughs> move is uh because 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 we're not using potions no invigoration potions we are saving the focus just in case uh an elite foe comes out which they most likely will and that could uh, enable the Magiologist to use, as you can see here, uh, the Brave Charm as well as maintain Magiologist's uh, damage with uh, Become the Beast, which needs to be at 5 focus. So let's have the uh, Aura come in here and um, fight this really high HP Death Eater, 3000 HP. First hits a critical hit, and by the way, my Brave Charm is fully maxed out. So. Uh, the, uh, as you can see, I over there was waiting, uh, just, w just wait a few seconds since the, uh, the aura was low on HP, just waited for the aura to die so we could res the aura so then I could go in and, uh, fight the Urkling, right? Um, it's not, it's not, we're not missing out on too much. Uh, we ha usually have two or three minutes left, uh, fighting, fighting, ch 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 uh, Forest 5 for the, uh, you know, challenge XP, so just wait for the professor, to, or not the professor, the Thor to die resin before I actually go back in. All right, so, um, dangerous Urklings. These are really, really annoying, uh, but they're not doing too much damage, which is nice. And the reason we why we have both weakening hex and confusion hex on the Urkling is, well, the Urkling, we don't want it to dodge it too much, and also, again, we don't want the magical all just to die. It, is it, we don't, like, it's, it's not a terrible deal for the Magiologist to die, like, once here, but if it dies twice, you don't want to deal with that. So, 
Um, that's why we're pulling so much defense on the Magic Vultures. Although, unfortunately, our Professor's Protection Charm is only level 1, so there totally could be an argument just for, you know, for going for Proficiency Charm over Protection Charm on the Magic Vultures, but, you know, I personally just feel like that's, that's a better way to go at it with the limited resources we have and just trying to go at it without any potions. Alright, so basically, uh, the Magic Vultures right now don't really have too much going for them uh, in terms of the enemies. It's probably the last one uh, they have to fight here, or I had to fight. <laughs> I don't know why I'm talking about myself in a third, third person, that's weird. So, alright, um, let's see, uh, the aura is about to die and um, the aura communicated, obviously, communicated that to me as soon as they have signs of dying so I could get out and revive them as soon as they go down. So we don't waste too much time on that one. All right, back at the Acromantula, which should do a lot of damage, but obviously with uh, the protections that I have, it isn't doing too much. And also, uh, we already have the proficiency charm up, so we are doing massive amounts of damage against these things uh, for the most part. Especially, look at the aura damage though, damn. All right. Dark Wizard should be dead? Maybe? Soon? TM? <laughs> Anyways, I got two more Dark Forces left. That's nothing um, the Magical just can do. The Professor just put up a uh, Deterioration Hex on the Dark Wizard. Um, reason being, just it's a bit more annoying. Giving uh, the last bit of focus to the professor, so the professor could potentially throw another deterioration hex on the, on the um, what was it called, Death Eater as well. There's the deterioration hex on the Death Eater, and um, yeah, just wait this out. Got three minutes remaining. This was a bit, a bit of a slower <laughs> round for us, but um, yeah, basically that's it. Trying to just go through this without using any potions and stuff. Uh, because, you know, farming, when trying to farm challenge points, red books, not, um, we're, we're trying our best to conserve as many resources as possible. Of course, there are times when, like, even in chain, even in only, you know, Forest 5, we still have to use uh, potions. It doesn't happen often, like, we probably have to use potions, like, once, maybe every 20 battles. Uh, but sometimes if we just get really really unlucky with the enemies if like the enemies are just all one type They're like all you know um, the, the one that hurts the most is if they're all um, uh, All uh, uh, what are what are the things that magical well, just start strong against them? Um, all I don't know just either Urklings or Acromantulas just because magical just want to use the brave charm and of course you should, it's almost guaranteed that you're gonna have at least one elite, usually two or three, right? But, um, uh, yeah, if they're all things that magical just have to deal with, uh, for the most part, after you use that Brave Charm, you really don't have too much focus for, uh, to, to sustain, become the beast, which that becomes a problem, especially without using Invigoration Draws. And that's probably the time when I'd personally just pop a, uh, Invigoration, not Invigoration Draw, Invigoration, a Strong Invigoration Potion, is that what it's called? to gain some focus up there to, to maintain my own uh, Become the Beast and also just to have some extra focus just in case we ever, you know, uh, need to revive folks. And there we go, the oh, Moody's uh, Moody Sneakoscope and we got uh, Luna's Glasses there on Nocturne Alley sign. So that's a breakdown of the EXP we get from that, 50% more with a 3 team bonus, 93 base for Forest Chamber 5, and yeah, oh also a friend bonus for the EXP, I totally forgot about that as well. Okay, so yeah that's basically it, 194 per run, takes about four or five minutes each run. The biggest problem, obviously, other than um, running out of rune stones, is, and this is our skill tree if you guys really care to have a look. Um, the Aura's skill tree is kind of screwed up, um, just because uh, we took Dancing of the Dummy, which by the way, 
they said they patched, but then they took that back. They and they said apparently it wasn't completely patched, so they so it's not working as intended. I guess I just got really really lucky uh, yesterday when going out and uh, trying trying uh, dancing with the dummies. But yeah, um, unfortunately, I, I the the aura did have dancing with the dummies unlocked. But if it did get, if or when it does get fixed, it's obviously a really really strong skill. But uh, yeah, aura she's kind of messed up. But otherwise, um, it, it was a pretty I guess flawless um, a run at, at that chamber there. Uh, usually, we get you know a decent amount. We get a level or two every like uh, i want to say hour probably every hour but it really really depends on our location of the fortress we need to find places with uh some good spell energy ins um that which which could be nice we actually found a place that's really good um it's actually at a tim hortons which they have three inns you don't have to move three inns and a fortress and there's another fourth inn uh, where it, which is also in walking distance, so that's a really good place, but it's a bit far away from my house, but uh, We'll we'll go there on community day for sure So that's gonna be fun. Anyways, uh, that's gonna be it for this video. Just a little showcase of uh, us uh, the, 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 group, uh, the group of three taking down the fortress uh, Hopefully, you know, that was slightly entertaining and helpful for those of you who don't know how to approach uh, higher level chamber fortresses for really easy and quick a challenge uh, EXP runs for you know, red books, which are really hard to get and um, obviously really useful. I don't even know what to spend my red books on my magical just right now. Like, uh, I like I, I'm kind of in the in a bit of a dilemma. So I could either go keep on bumping up my HP, which I don't really care too much about at the moment, or I could save and then go for. Uh, go and add my proficiency, which is, which I do care a bit more, but like, it's like 20, tw like 25, 21, 25 red books per upgrade. So that's going to take me a while. So I could either go for the short term, you know, quick and easy, three or four red book, uh, stamina upgrades, or save for the proficiency one. So far, I've been terrible at saving, so I've just been going for stamina. But uh, yeah, anyways. Uh, that's going to be it for this video. hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like on the video. I would appreciate that. Uh, let me know in the comments down below what kind of groups that you guys play in and which fortress level do you guys go to farm for a challenge EXP. And also, um, subscribe to the channel for some more Wizard Unite content. And I will see you guys in the next one.